everybody! This is a pretty big frickin' deal. How big a deal is it? I'm doing my first live ever breakdown because I didn't want to make you wait hours for my thoughts on this. And because I got the entire slate last night, I was able to program my stream to have all the visuals so that I'm going to be basically, to some degree, editing it live. So I'm so glad that you're able to join me. This is also going to work a little bit different than the usual live streams. You can try to ask me a question, but I'm not probably not going to answer you until uh, I think after each section, I'll open it up to a couple of questions. And then, of course, at the very end, we'll do an Ask Me Anything. But I want this to play like a video. I'm going to go over everything. I have thoughts on everything, from every project to James Gunn's presentation with that video. Uh, we're going to have a great time, and I'm going to put chapter times uh, in the video once it's gone live. So if you're not watching this live, you'll be able to jump to the portion that you're interested in. And that's right, I even got a new shirt for today because this is serious stuff. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about it. I'm excited. I also have some very good flash tea for you. Excellent flash tea. This is good stuff. Uh, all right, so let's get started. Uh, so I got all these graphics, baby. So there we go. And with that, the new DCU was born. Phase one is called Gods and Monsters, which is actually a title which comes from a DC animated movie from a couple of years ago. This is all very comics and animated based, you know, based on the animation. This stuff isn't just coming out of nowhere. Uh, it, is, it is pretty fair. Uh, but I think, <laughs> I don't think it's gonna work out too great. Uh, but anyway, I think it's very Snydery. I think calling the type, I mean, the MCU just calls it phases. You know, they don't, they don't brand them. And this one is branded gods and monsters, which just feels very Zack Snydery to me. However, my biggest problem with the title is that based on the slate, it makes absolutely no sense. It's like they just called it gods and monsters to be cool because I don't see anything about gods and monsters here. You know, I don't see that kind of setup. I don't see them kind of trying to build anything. It's just, oh, wouldn't it be cool? Wouldn't it be wicked cool if we called it gods and monsters? And you're like, it is kind of cool, but it would be even cooler if it meant something. Overall, this actually seems to me a lot like the animated movies. Uh, let me bring up that graphic, hold on. Uh, and that, that they're, they, the animated movies were quite popular at one point but they themselves have kind of lost focus. And I feel like that's kind of like the, the direction we're shifting in. Now, I want to say that the good news is, is that James Gunn clearly thinks like a DC fan. And I think there's going to be a portion of the DC fandom that is very happy. The bad news is, though, is that he still does not think like an executive. What makes me say that? Well, he's keeping his friends. Ah, oh, man, it's not a 100% reboot. It's not. For me, I think that significantly undermines what he's doing here. Um, but for some people, it won't. So who is he keeping? I saw one before we started. Some of you were like, who is he keeping? I need clarification. Here it comes. So Viola Davis is sticking around from, you know, uh, the Peacemaker show, and she's getting her own show. Now, because she's getting her own show, even though it wasn't clarified, I believe this means that the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker are also both safe and will be living in this show and then potentially in other places. Uh, I'm surprised that's how Viola Davis looked on the Peacemaker show. That is cheap. You know, she looked much cooler in the movies, but I specifically wanted to grab a screenshot from the show. So the Gunverse lives. The Gunverse lives. I have to tell you, I will watch the Amanda Wall. I'm gonna watch all of this because I'm a DC fan and I'm certainly gonna cover it. I hope it has enough of an audience for people to be interested in. But I love Viola Davis's Amanda Waller, but I wouldn't have kept her because you gotta get rid of everybody, in my opinion, to make this truly seem like it's fresh and exciting and new. This to me, I'll just say it right now, I'm gonna say it a little bit at the end before we get to the details. I think this kind of just seems like what we're doing now, just with different leadership. It seems exactly like the, the same thing. I don't think it's any different. Uh, so, you know, it's going to have ups and downs. Some of this stuff's going to hit, some of it's not going to hit. You're not building anything. So, okay. All right. So anyway, uh, this show is going to be run by Crystal Henry. I have her picture, uh, from Watchmen. So that also makes me feel very good about this show. I loved Watchmen, although nobody watched Watchmen. Who watches the Watchmen? Nobody. 
Uh, and so that's a little bit concerning. And also Jeremy Carver, who worked on Doom Patrol, Umbrella Academy, and also co is co-writing the new Mortal Kombat movie. So he's very in at Warner Brothers. I didn't have time to grab his picture because I just found out he was involved like 15 minutes ago. Now, who else is staying? Ah, uh, this is the weird thing. So it looks like the other people who are staying are the people who showed up for the season finale of Peacemaker, and that's Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller. I'm sure Henry Cavill is like, I should have showed up. <laughs> Yet again, a cameo undoes him. Uh, Henry, Gal, uh, you know, Ray Fisher and Ben Affleck didn't show up for the end of Peacemaker, and it looks like, you know, they're not sticking around, but it looks like Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller might actually stay which is just absolutely incredible. Uh, so I think that partially they're doing this on also box office. I think box office will be crucial as to deciding the future of these characters if they stick around, how these movies do. We're getting a Flash trailer at the Super Bowl. Now let me tell you a little bit of Flash tea. I found out, just found out, that in the Flash they've stripped out, James Gunn has instructed them to strip out all of the teases at the end of the movie. Henry Cavill's been taken out. Gal Gadot's been taken out. Sasha Kaye has been taken out. So that's why they're, I think they're going with a different Supergirl. Uh, it's just going to be an else, you know, Barry just runs between the universe, the multiverse, and everything's going to stay in the movie. I also heard that Michael Keaton was taken out at the end as well. So they're all out. It's just going to be Ezra Miller comes back to some other reality. So Ezra Miller is truly the Flash wild card that he is in the comics, and he can go wherever he wants. But they're not going to keep anything from that movie, at least in the main universe. It's just been all the promises of that ending have been stripped out. I heard that they are filming a special cameo with a character from a long time ago in the DC world. So I think that's going to emphasize that Barry can go wherever he wants. But that's a, that's a really, really big deal. And I do believe because of that, Sasha Kaye is not the Supergirl that they're discussing here. Because uh, there is a Supergirl movie that they're making, which we're going to talk about. Then the other problem I have... Um, so I, I just, it's amazing. If Ezra Miller wins this, I mean, I think it would be very hard for him to get over that. I mean, that would have to be quite the apology tour for Ezra Miller. Uh, and also you'll notice no mention of Lobo. No mention, uh, no mention of Lobo. They didn't talk about Lobo today. So I think they're going to see how Aquaman does. I think Jason Momoa was just thrilled that he wasn't fired, quite frankly, or that they decided to go in a different direction. He's still going with that, James Gunn. He still is saying, I didn't fire anybody. And you're like, you did. Um, I believe uh, Sabusio, I believe that Gal Gadot is not staying. Not that she couldn't come back in an Elseworld story. That's the thing. Once you have an Elseworld situation as they're building out here, you can bring anybody back. But they're not part of James Gunn's universe. He's going to have his own Wonder Woman. Just like he's going to have, hold on, here it comes, his own freaking Batman. I'm very against this. I'm very against having two Batman. So there's going to be... The Batman Part 2, which will be an Elseworlds story. They're doing Elseworlds material. So, okay, all right, so anything that's not part of James Gunn's core DCU will be branded Elseworlds. I really love Elseworlds comics. They're some, they've been some of my favorite as a comic book fan. I don't think that mainstream audiences can understand this. Now, Damian Wayne will be Robin. And I got to tell you, he's my favorite Robin, too, as James Gunn said today. But you know what? I don't think you can skip Dick Grayson and Jason Todd. You just can't do it. Uh, I know that they'll probably be referenced and they probably will have happened somewhere in the past, but I don't think, you know, the whole point of Damian Wayne is what a different Robin he is. So if you don't establish the original Robins, Damian Wayne doesn't make any sense. Also, Damian Wayne better be half Middle Eastern as an actor, as a casting choice. I'm going to be really upset if he isn't. Uh, so I'm all for skipping origin stories to some degree at this point, because who doesn't know these stories? But you can't skip that much. You can't skip Dick Grayson and Jason Todd, especially because Dick Grayson is such a big part of Damian Wayne's story. So that, to me, is very odd. Now, I will say overall that I feel that this is a very a la carte menu. That's one of my biggest issues with it. This is still not building anything, but they are building one thing. They are building Superman versus the elite, but with the authority, I hear, stepping in for the elite. That's why they're doing an authority movie, so that Superman in a follow-up film can fight the elite. I don't really care to see that, quite frankly. The only thing that's interesting about bringing the authority in is that they have a very famous LGBT couple, and that's Midnighter and Apollo. Uh, so Midnighter and Apollo will be in this James Gunn's world, 
But I also think it's going to be weird to have the authority when you have Thunderbolts over at Marvel. You have the Suicide Squad, which are clearly sticking around. And then also, um, what about the boys? I think this is all competing with the boys, very much so. And I think you'd have a very hard time at this point topping the boys. It is very James Gunn. But that's what they want. They want a Superman versus the elite. But here's my thing, okay? I just want to see Superman fight his classic villains from the animated series and stuff. I don't understand why. I real. I mean, I'm, I'd rather see. I mean, if they, I'm, if they said, "Oh, do you want to fight uh, him? See him fight the uh, the authority?" I'd be like, "Well, now I actually would prefer to fight Jason Momoa as Lobo because I don't want to see him fight the authority." Quite frankly. Uh, so that's something that they're planning, but that's what I would like to see. I would like to see him fight his original villains first, but uh, we'll see. Now, is this doomed to failure? I wouldn't say that. I think a big crucial thing is going to be the casting and the talent behind the camera. He only confirmed that he's writing Superman right now. James Gunn only said he's working on Superman. There was no other talent confirmed in front of or behind the camera, except for the Amanda Waller people, which had already been announced a while ago. That is crucial. Absolutely crucial. Uh, I do think, again, that there will just be ups and downs. I think people will watch what they want to watch. No one's going to feel they have to watch everything. And that is problematic, quite frankly. I feel that's an issue um, for going forward. Uh, I also feel that it will make it unable to operate at the level of Marvel. I think that because it's not all connected, it'll never have that same situation. I'll also say with all the Marvel com content coming out, look, that's Marvel Phase 5. Where is DC fit in there? I think it's tough. I think it's going to be really, really tough. Uh, I think a lot of mainstream moviegoers who aren't hardcore comic book fans are already superheroed out, and I think it's going to be difficult for them to, to follow this as well. Uh, I think that'll just emphasize the a la carte aspect of this, with people just watching what they're interested in. Uh, I also say that I felt the presentation today was weak. I thought that the, I'm glad there was a video, but I thought it was a surprisingly poor video. I think Warner Brothers Discovery must really have no money if that's the best they could do. I'd be like, who edited this? Some of these images aren't even full screen. <laughs> Some of them have black bars on the side of that. What the heck is that? And then I also feel that James Gunn needs to work a little bit on his presentation skills. Uh, I think that, I mean, I guess he wanted to be a little bit serious because some people didn't get what they wanted, but I still feel that he has to work on his showmanship. It's a skill, and he's not, you know, he's a director. He's a behind-the-scenes guy. That's fine, but he needs a little bit of work on it. It was not a great presentation. All right, does anybody have any questions um, about this overall stuff before we go into the specifics? Uh, we're going to break down each of the projects in just a moment. Think Noodle says, Grace with James' new Batman, Todd's Joker, and Matt's Batman, we're essentially going to have at least three Jokers and three Harleys. I agree. I think that it's just, and it's going to divide fandom. People are going to be like, who do you like better? The Batman who has the son Damian Wayne or Robert Pattinson's Batman? I don't, I don't, I didn't need to do that Batman story. They have so many projects they announced today. They could have left, as I said before, a giant Batman sized hole and just been like, as I told you, hey, Matt Reeves, you want to put your Batman in there? Cosmic says, Grace, thank you for all the coverage in T. I'll try my best to join every... Ah, oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Uh, and Stanlow says, I'm a hardcore DC fan. Current DC is a trash fire. And Arun says, Gun confirmed that Henry was never hired and that was never a deal. For That's right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And I still feel that he... It's ridiculous not to accept some culpability for that, quite frankly. And uh, Sammy says, isn't this more of the same Frankenstein stuff for DC, but with Gunn's name on it instead of Hamada? I totally agree. I think Peter Safran is the new Walter Hamada, and I think James Gunn is the new Zack Snyder. It's exactly the same setup as you had before. He's, they are not a Kevin Feige. They're not even trying to be a Kevin Feige. And I think they should have tried to be a little bit of a Kevin Feige. I think that's the whole reason that they were hired, uh, you know, to create that. And, I, and they didn't do that. And Terror, that's right. If you don't have, I mean, I guess that, you know, Terror is saying, I feel bad there isn't going to be a Red Hood storyline. I guess if Damian Wayne exists, there is a Jason Todd in the past somewhere. But I think if you don't build that, I think that's a problem. And Millie Joe says, all I care about is Nightwing. Where is he? He's not going to be in this first lineup. Palm Tree says, I think if these projects are high quality, having a certain level of gravitas, that is correct spelling, it could work. I do think some of these will be good. I do. I honestly do. Thanks for joining Silver Scale. Hey, Jordan. Uh, I think Blue Beetle, again, Blue Beetle will be safe if it performs well at the box office. Um, 
a niche. I don't want. I don't think Ben Barnes can be Batman because he has to be old enough to have a son. It's Damian Wayne's age, and also Ben Barnes is just basically Robert Pattinson, right? And uh, Shashank says, I think he's trying to mimic Kingdom Come with the authority as the new heroes against Superman. That's very possible, but I'd rather he just did Kingdom Come. All right, I'll do a poll. I'll do a poll. Um, Ryan says, Grace, I remember when Gunn was going to announce, he said he wasn't going to let go of his people, and look what happened. Yeah, he's not going to... He, um, he's not going to let go of his people. And I think that that'll be difficult for him to get over. I think the favoritism is going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. And I'm almost positive that Chris Pratt's going to be Booster Gold. I would be really surprised. I think the only reason you'd tell a Booster Gold story is so that you can bring Chris Pratt over to the DCEU. So yeah, I'll do a poll. I'll do a poll. I'll ask you what you think of this. What do you think? And then we'll go into the specifics. What do you think of Guns... DC Slate. Where the hell is Peter Safran? He was apparently at this event, but he didn't go on record. He's like, I don't want my name on this. <laughs> He's like, I'm happy just collecting my paycheck here in the background. So love it. I'm open to it. Then uh, skeptical. I think I spelled that correctly. And then hate it. So you got four choices. There you go. You can vote in that poll. Zachary Levi is not staying, Frank. Um, let's see here. Jesse the Goodwitch says, how much is gun and how much is saffron? I would suspect it's almost entirely gun. Uh, I think saffron just helps him organize it, to be honest with you. Um, Saad says, I have a lot of mixed feelings. I hope he's phasing up to the DCU and we can stick to a linear DCU after that. I feel like he's slowly, slowly getting rid of everything. I don't think so. I think he's probably going to keep Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller, if I had to guess. Let's see. Let's see. If less their movies are just total bombs. All right, let me break down the specific projects and then you can um, ask me anything and I'll definitely be covering all of your super chats and questions at that point, Okay. All right, so let's get to the next project. Here we go. Uh, CF, we'd have no information on who any of the villains are, or what these stories are going to be about, beyond what I'm about to share with you. All right, let's get started. So the first thing is, is James Gunn's Superman movie, which has a release date. It's penciled in. That means it's not definitive, but they're aiming for July 11th, 2025. Why would you open a Superman movie a few days after the 4th of July? Well, that's because Disney has already reserved July 2nd, 2025. So this will be coming out. July 4th is on a Friday that year. So this will be coming out the Friday afterwards. Uh, uh, I'm using actually Jeff John's uh, po uh, covers because I like Gary Frank's artwork here. I want to go back to basics on Superman. That's crucial to me. But I do think based on his presentation and what he's picked, James Gunn likes... Grant Morrison, he likes Tom King, he likes that kind of writing. And I have to say, I think the appeal of that writing is limited. So I think that's also potentially going to affect the projects that he does, because I think he's picking things that are, also he's picking creators that are very male-centric in their appeal, and I wonder if he'll be able to create four-quadrant projects um, with that, with that uh, situation. So yes, so the Superman Legacy movie comes out July 11th, 2025, all right? So far, only Gunn as the writer is announced. Then he's doing a Supergirl movie, Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. And it is indeed, as he clarified today, based on the comic book by Tom King that came out last year. It was eight issues. And I have to tell you, it was a great comic. Really, really great comic. However, this is a very expensive story. She is going from planet to planet, trying to help that young girl avenge the murder of her father. It's an incredible comic. It's incredible. I think it might be too early to tell the story. Uh, I don't really know if people are interested. I think the optics of getting rid of Sasha Kaye for a blonde Supergirl could be problematic. Um, and I just feel that I, I'm not sure about, uh, you know, telling the story so early. Also, based on the story, I feel maybe it could have been a series. But I love this comic so much that I am excited about this. I am excited about this because I loved the comic so much. Uh, so we'll see. But I, as I told you, because Sasha Kaye isn't at the end of the Flash movie anymore, I don't believe that she will be this character. Uh, then he announced his Batman movie, and it's called Batman Brave and the Bold. Uh, and Damien will be the Robin. Uh, as I said, 
I really want this to be a half Middle Eastern, if not entirely Middle Eastern casting choice for Damien. I think if you're going to do Damien Wayne, you got to do Damien Wayne right. And the Al Ghouls are from the Middle East. So that to me is very important. Uh, I, Damian Wayne is also my favorite Robin, so I am kind of excited about that. But I feel to skip right to him and have Batman having an assassin son, I think, um, I think mainstream audiences are going to be like, what the heck is this? So I think a big part of this will be who do they cast, who plays these characters, who writes it, who directs it. But also, I feel kind of bad because... Um, I feel, I feel kind of bad because I don't want Robert Pattinson to be undercut. Let me close this poll. I want to ask you another poll. Uh, the poll is, hold on, no Harley or Ivy just yet, although I have slight, a slight theory on that. But of course, there's the Waller show. Uh, 37% are skeptical. You're all mid-range. That's good. None of you have judged it. 11% uh, love it, 14% hate it, but for the most part... Uh, about 80% of you, a little under 80%, you know, are in the middle. You're, you're, willing, you're get, willing to give it a chance. I think, so that's good. So that's nice. The question I want to ask you, though, in the poll is, who's your favorite Robin? Because that, to me, will be very interesting. So we'll put Damian Wayne first, because he's the one we're getting. Dick Grayson. I don't know how you can't start with Dick Grayson. It makes no sense to me. Uh, Dick Grayson, uh, Jason Todd, and then we will put um, uh, Tim Drake in there because he particularly has a lot of fans now that he's an LGBT character. All right, so there it is. I'd like to know your favorite Robin, please. And I'll be curious to see if Damian Wayne, you know, he'd have to win this poll for this to be a good idea. Uh, and I don't think he's going to win it. All right, so we'll continue as this goes on. We'll let that poll stay up while we continue. All right, next up, uh, a Wonder Woman HBO Max show, which they say is going to take place almost entirely on Themyscira, and it will be like Game of Thrones. I mean, will it? <laughs> will it be like Game of Thrones? I mean, let's see. Uh, if they're going to do a Game of Thrones-style Wonder Woman show on Themyscira, it better lean into the lesbian aspects of Themyscira. Uh, I don't see any reason not to do that. Uh, I think that reminds me a lot of George Perez's artwork, so that's why I included it there. You can see that's all the mascara. And so that could be a very interesting show. It'll be basically like the last episode of The Last of Us, but with women on the mascara in a tropical paradise. And I got to tell you, that Last of Us episode did pretty darn well. Uh, it certainly got a lot of chatter online. I think it made Murray Bartlett and Nick Offerman even bigger stars than they already were. So this could work. This could work. So this isn't an Amazon's show. This is a new show. It's not the show that was in development. This is a totally different show that they came up with. Now, I do think that the only member of the Trinity who's a woman not getting a movie while the other two guys do, it's not great. But maybe her show is better. Maybe we'll be like, ah, oh, you should have gotten a show. The show was amazing. So maybe that'll work out. But I think it's not great that Wonder Woman, I mean, let's see. It's a little bit weird. But and it's got it's going to have to deal with the lesbian aspects. I mean, you can't tell this story today and not deal with that. And so I think that'll be interesting for that show and how fandom reacts to that. Uh, but again, I love having all these shows because it gives me tons of content to cover. We'll be doing weekly breakdowns. It's going to be amazing. I'm excited. I think Diana is in the show, but it's going to be about Diana, you know, getting growing up and, you know, probably deciding to go to Man's World eventually. Maybe that's how it ends. Maybe that's how the first season ends and then she jumps into a movie, uh, which I got to tell you is a pretty solid pitch, to be honest with you. And I heard this is not Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot, again, she could potentially be in an Elseworlds movie. She could potentially come into some to play some other way. But I do not believe that this is going to be Gal Gadot. And I got to tell you, I don't want it to be Gal Gadot. You can't have a new Superman and a new Batman and then Gal Gadot walk up and be like, how you guys doing? Also, I have to say, I don't think Gal Gadot is a good enough actress for a show, for an ongoing show. I think I felt that the, I think Wonder Woman 1984 really showed her liability as an actress. So I think they should get somebody else. All right, then next up, speaking of shows, we got a Green Lantern show. We're getting a Green Lantern show. I hope they spend a lot of money on it because you can't do this if it's not expensive. This will be Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, as you can see. Uh, and they've been talking about a Green Lantern show for a very long time. Will it ever actually see the light of day? Green Lantern's light. I hope so. Uh, let's see. I'm glad that Jon Stewart's on it, uh, but I'm not looking forward to the arguments between Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart fans. This is like Splash Mountain versus the Tiana ride. It's, it's a little frustrating. I hope that's not the case. 
because uh, I mean, no, I'm a, I like John Stewart. Anyone who watched the Justice League animated series is a John Stewart fan. But if you if you're big into the Green Lantern comics, you prefer Hal Jordan. Uh, all right. So uh, next, then uh, t- talking about shows, we have the Amanda Waller show, which we just discussed. Uh, and then also we have Booster Gold will be a show. And I really do feel this will probably be Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt's doing a lot of TV these days. He's certainly not against it. Uh, I, think, I think it would work. I think, and I think he would be a good Booster Gold, to be honest with you. I mean, I think he is very much like the character. I mean, he back, basically is Booster Gold. Who is Booster Gold? You know, James Gunn pitched it as an identity crisis for a superhero. I don't really think that's it. Booster Gold is like kind of like a silly guy who's from the future, who's a super fan of the current characters, the current heroes. He has a little robot, Skeets, who follows him around. uh, And, you know, he just does a lot of silly stuff. It's very comedic, very James Gunn, very peacemaker. Uh, Let's see. I mean, let's see how it works. Uh, I I wouldn't do a booster goal. I mean, these next things, after the Waller show, I actually wouldn't do these things. All right, so boost your gold, uh, and then they're going to do a Swamp Thing movie, which I think is a horrible idea. They already did a Swamp Thing show, and that was a really good show, actually. First, it was on DCU, DC Universe. Then it went over to the CW. Nobody watched it wherever they put it. And it was even good. I don't think this is a good idea. I, I mean, for some reason, DC fans try to make Swamp Thing work. Stop trying to make Swamp Thing work. Not popular. It's only popular with a very small group of people. Maybe you could put Poison Ivy on this show, and this I mean, this movie, and then maybe you, people would watch it. That's the only way I can see it working, if it's an exploration of the green. But yeah, Swamp Thing is a movie. And then, um, again, let me go back and find that image. The Authority. Uh, nope, that's not what it is. Yeah, The Authority. The Authority, and this is interesting, The Authority is going to be an animated movie. An animated movie. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 not animated. The Authority is not animated. I'm sorry, sorry, that's a mistake. The Authority is a live action movie, again, leading into the Superman versus the Authority project, which is like Superman versus the Elite. And then they do have an animated project. Hold on, here it comes. Um, uh, Thanks, Matthew. That's very generous of you. Uh, Let's see here. And so they're doing a Creature Commandos animated movie. And then you can see Weasel in there, played, of course, uh, by James Gunn's, I believe his brother, right, did the motion capture for that. So, you know, again... If you're friends with Gunn, you get to stick around. Uh, and then, you know, that's based on a, a comic book for, that's been around for a long time, actually. It's basically the League of Extraordinary... Ge- how is this not Suicide Squad, by the way? How do you ha- well, I mean, how do you have this team in the Suicide Squad? But anyway, uh, Creature Commandos is animated. I heard it was a movie, uh, you know, um, but that's what I heard. Uh, I, I mean, I'd be interested to see DC playing in the theatrical space with animation. I would like that. I don't know if I would like it with this. I think this is not a great project. This is basically um, this is basically a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen with like classic monsters, uh, but in World War II. I, well, it started out in World War II, but it's probably a, a new thing. It's like a um, it's like it's like a hoorah version of it. Uh, and you know. I don't I don't know really now. You know, also oh, Variety said it was a series. Okay, so it's an animated series. Uh, I mean, like, here's the thing. There was no reason. Why, why get rid of Doom Patrol and keep this? I guess maybe this is less expensive to make, but it seems to me like the exact same thing. Uh, thank you, Christian. All right, let me close this poll, and then we'll do Ask Me Anything. So those are my initial thoughts on this. End poll, no question about it. Dick Grayson won by a landslide, 56%. 23% of you voted for Damian Wayne. I hope you all do love Damian Wayne that much, and you're just not swayed by the fact he's going to be the DCU's Robin. But that's nice to see. It warms my heart as a Damian Wayne fan. But yeah, Dick Grayson is the most popular. You can't have the, the fact that the first movie Robin, uh, you know, like legit, not, not um, uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, Chris O'Donnell. You know, not Chris O'Donnell, but that, that wouldn't be Dick Grayson. And would it instead be Damian Wayne, uh, that just as a DC fan seems insane to me. Uh, all right, so it's the Ask Me Anything portion of this. I can stay on for a good, like, 10 to 15 minutes here. Uh, um, Ali says, the next Superman and Batman movies come out in the same year, and they are not connected. That's bad. I don't think I want to see The Brave and the Bold, since Pat- Pat- Pattinson would not be Batman there. I mean, never say never. You'll have to see who's cast, but I do think it's very odd. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Make sure I don't miss anything. 
Uh, Brian says, it was, I was really hyped, but that presentation looked cheap. I wonder if they actually have the funds to do this right. I was hoping for more. Who do you see as the new Supergirl? Emma Stone would kind of be a cool choice for that Supergirl. They have to pick someone who's not going to vogue. That Supergirl is very down to earth. She has a lot of personal trauma. It's very, very important that they get that casting right. Uh, and you know what? I really liked uh, James Gunn's casting uh, of Daniela Melchior in a piece, uh, I mean, in the Suicide Squad as Ratcatcher. So if he could cast her, maybe he could cast this correctly. But I'm not, I mean, I'm not totally confident. Paul says, is Michael Keaton in The Flash at all? Yes, Michael Keaton is definitely still in The Flash, but it's no longer a situation where they change the current DC main world where now he's in it. I think he's going to stay in whatever universe Ezra Miller visits. Uh, Middle Kid says, did I miss The Flash T? I'll tell it to you again, just to reiterate. Uh, the Flash now ends with no teases for anyone sticking around. They got rid of Henry, they got rid of Gal Gadot, they got rid of Michael Keaton, they got rid of Sasha Kaye. It's just Ezra Miller coming to a different timeline. And they have a different fun cameo that is going to be filmed there. But, you know, it's, it's really more about just emphasizing that Ezra Miller took a trip to a different uni multiverse, and that's not what James Gunn is building. Babette says, do you think Margot Robbie will return? I almost guarantee that she will return. I think that he didn't announce it today because he didn't want people to get upset. And I think Margot Robbie's busy. I think she will return. I think that the Waller show is the back door to keeping the gunverse. That keeps the gunverse alive. Uh, Steven Turner says, I hope they make the Amazons more diverse than Patty's film. I think they will for sure. I wonder if it will be how it will be able to feel exciting after Mar Marvel does. You know, Steven, they're not only doing a Dora Milaje show, but don't forget that Dune is still doing their show about all those women priestesses. So that's, that's two all-women shows on HBO Max. That seems weird to me. Kate says, apparently Gunn said the, the Waller show is set between season one and two of, um, where'd that go? Hold on. Where'd it go? Sometimes this stuff skips ahead. Kate says, apparently Gunn said the Waller show is set between season one and season two of Peacemaker. Does that mean season, Peacemaker season two is still happening? I think that James Gunn is really busy, and so that's why they put a pin in Peacemaker season two. Let's see how it all shakes out. Let's see if he's directing Superman. Uh, so I think they're just going to focus on Waller for now. But I think that they're not going to not make Peacemaker 2. I think they just haven't decided. Raphael says, I'm so worried about gun handling Midnighter and Apollo because I'm scared he will push the edgy part. I would be concerned about that as well. I think I would be very concerned about that. And I hope that, you know, they have enough time to do their story right, considering it's a movie and a very big team. Uh, Cosmic says they should have utilized the stagecraft stage for the presentation. I felt like it was entering a classroom. Yeah, it was like very, it was like not a good presentation. I felt that, pre thanks W. I feel that presentation needed, like, I think that presentation could have easily been improved. Easily been improved. Um, they can't be that broke at Warner Brothers Discovery. Maybe they thought it was charming. I don't know. Uh, the one and only says, Grace, what do you think of Netflix uh, leasing Spider-Verse, Snyderverse? Is that, no. I don't think they will ever lease the Snyderverse to anyone else because they just can't dilute themselves like that. And I don't think Netflix would want it, quite frankly. And they would have to be such an ast astronomical fee. It's just not worth the headache. Anthony says, there's no goal here. It's all over the place. I, yes, I agree with that. I totally agree with that. I think it's definitely all over the place. I think, again, it's an a la carte menu. I think that they are still catering to talent and what interests talent, including James Gunn. James Gunn, I think, still thinks of himself as a DC fan and talent. He doesn't think of himself as an executive, and that's going to always be a problem for this uh, franchise. Let's see here. Sean says, thoughts on the Batman Part 2 title release date? Um, somebody said it was 2025. What was the release date? I didn't see the Batman release date. Um, can someone just fill? Uh, I'm not caught up in the chat. Oh, October. Well, that's when the first one came out. October 2025. That's fine with me. I do think it's weird to have two Superman and Batman come out the same year and they're not related. I really am curious to see if they can educate mainstream audiences on Elseworlds, what an Elseworlds story is. Uh, I tried to tell some people last night that I know about the DC slate who aren't DC fans and their eyes just glazed over. 
I was like, let me tell you what James Gunn is doing. And they're, they're like not big DC fans. They don't go, I mean, comic book fans, they don't even see every Marvel movie anymore. And I was like, all right, you ready? And they were like, this is so much. And they were, it just was like a, just a cloud to them. So I think that's kind of the problem there. Who said that? Splendorous? Millie Alcock as Supergirl is a pretty good idea, actually. She would be a good choice. Uh, Steven Turner says, how will Warner Brothers afford to make these films if they are so broke and can't afford to release the films they already have? Well, let me tell you about film financing. They don't have to pay for these films directly. They do have, a, uh, they do have money that they're supposed to have. But what will happen is, is that they will reach out to a film finance company like uh, Legendary used to be. There are fil- and Brett Ratner was running a, you know, uh, the Rat Pack. Brett Ratner, that's how Kevin Sujihara got in trouble because the reason that Brett Ratner got the deal is that he provided uh, favors, favors for Kevin Sujihara of the inappropriate nature. Uh, that's how he secured the financing deal. But Warner Brothers will probably reach out to a film financier company and get them to underwrite the DC movies. Uh, I don't know how much they can get, uh, but that's kind of how it works as well. But, you know, it is concerning. Maximilian says, do you think we could see the Harley and Ivy relationship in live action? You know, I think where you're going to see Harley and Ivy next is you're going to see Harley Quinn in The Joker 2, played by Lady Gaga. I believe they're probably going to have them in the Arkham Asylum show that Matt Reeves is doing, which, of course, wasn't announced here. They didn't talk about the Penguin show, which is about to start filming. And they didn't talk. I mean, wouldn't it be horrible? Wouldn't it be horrible if the Reeves verse made everybody be like, this is the good stuff. And then the thing that's the gun verse, which is bigger, everybody was like, I don't like that. I mean, that would be really weird. And I can see that definitely happening. Uh, Jacob says, James stared into the darkness and he blinked. I agree. I feel if he had done a straight, if he'd done a hundred percent reboot and gotten rid of everybody, even the popular characters, I think that would have bought him such tremendous goodwill from fans that that would have been just absolutely incredible for him. But he didn't do it. His friends were more important to him, and they can console him when this maybe blows up in his face. Uh, Stan Lowe says, is the Big Seven the only league for the movies? Uh, I think that they're not building a Justice League right now. I mean, if you're talking about Superman fighting the authority in a future film, when's the Justice League show up? Wonder Woman is going to take her a whole season of television even to get to Man's World. Uh, so I feel like you're, you're far away from a Justice League for the moment now. Maud said, Gunn said the same actors will play the live action and animated parts. What does this say about Kelly Cuoco and the Harley Quinn animated series? That's a very interesting question. You know, we'll see if that continues. We'll see if that's an exception. Uh, but that does not make any sense. But I mean, he says a lot of stuff. Remember, pay attention not to what they say, but what they do. James Gunn says a lot of stuff and then doesn't do it, you know? So I mean, like... I wouldn't necessarily take everything at totally face value. Uh, I mean, you're talking about a guy who has his tweet set to auto-delete. So, I mean, you can't hold him to anything. Uh, Jordan says, I'm actually excited for Batman Brave and the Bold, but I pray they cast correctly for Batman and Robin. Yeah, a casting is crucial here. I mean, casting and talent, writers and directors, will really change how I think a lot of us feel about this stuff, pro, pro and con. You know, I mean, that, that can really make a difference. Eden, I I have to tell you, I don't think that so far James Gunn's that great at casting. I think that occasionally he casts really well, but I don't think he's a great caster. I think it's difficult to cast, period, these days. Even Marvel is struggling because there's not a lot of talent available because they've used it all already. It's very hard to cast. Eden says, are the Sandman and Sweet Tooth safe on Netflix? Totally. Definitely, Eden. I think they're just so far afield of this. It's like they're just DC as in they were once DC Comics. It will be okay, says, wow, Henry must be livid. Yeah, I think he's probably, again, I'm telling you, Henry Cavill's probably like, I should have showed up for that cameo on Peacemaker. You know, I mean, Henry Cavill is a bit of a kiss-up, and he certainly kissed up to Warner Brothers executives, but he should have kissed up to James Gunn. You know, anybody who kissed up to James Gunn survived, except for Zachary Levi, but he was friends with Peter Safran, and apparently Peter Safran can't save his friends. That's so hilarious. Peter Safran can't even save his own friends. It's only Gunn's friends. Uh, Jay <coughs> Shrimpleskin says, your display of emotion towards such a beautiful representation of a love story told through my community in The Last of Us really touched my heart. Oh, my pleasure. That was a beautiful, beautiful episode. I think everyone should relate to it. It was just love. They just showed love. 
Ryan Johnson said, excited for the new Supergirl. Marvel waited too long and has shafted its women-led projects for too long. The comic the Supergirl movie is based on is one of my favorites. I agree, Ryan. If they can pull that off, it could be really special. It would be incredible if they pulled that off. Uh, Ryan Hanton says, this is all crap. Even if some of it's good, it will not, it'll still be connected to crap. If we make the Superman movie make no money, will they change course? Um, no. I think that this is it until maybe Warner Brothers Discovery sells Warner Brothers. If, Z if Zazie can unload DC, then you might see a reboot. But they're going to do most of this, I think. You're, I think they're going to do most of this because... I mean, how many times can they reboot? Uh, Lucas says, DC's problem for years is that they are trying to catch up to Marvel without putting in the work to develop the universe from scratch. Um, I, would, I would agree with that. I would agree. I think that I, I think that this is all over the place. I think you don't see them building anything. I think that it would have been better just to do Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Green Lantern, and that's it. I wouldn't have done the Waller stuff because it's the Gunverse, basically. And I probably wouldn't have done Supergirl. I think it's too early for Supergirl. I just would have focused on reestablishing the Trinity. And I think I maybe would have gone from there. That would be kind of interesting. Superman Legacy, Batman and Robin, and then Wonder Woman with a TV series. And then she ends the season going to Man's World. And maybe Batman and Superman show up. That could be like your phase one, quite frankly. But, you know, they're investors now. Uh, Kirsten Dunst fan. I don't think that James Gunn is related to Anna Gunn, but I mean, I, uh, that, 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 I can't vouch for that 100%. Thanks, Greg Lazaro. Anthony Garcia says, as MJ said, expect disappointment and you will never be disappointed. I think that's true. Uh, Swamp Thing says, I love that the production value of your stream is way better than the official DC <laughs> announcement. Thank you, Swamp Thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm just a single person. Imagine if I had the resources of Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, which apparently are not that much. I'd be like, can you at least send me an IT person to like, to, to they had, and they had, that, was, that wasn't even done live. They had 20, they had 12 hours to edit that video and that's what they came up with. And he's just in front of a red curtain. They didn't even put him on a sound stage. I would have put him on a sound stage and have him walk out from behind a curtain and go, hello, I'm James Gunn. <laughs> that would have been so great. Oh, I would have loved that so much. All right, but he didn't do it. All right. He needs someone to produce these things for him. What the hell, Peter Safran? What are you doing? Let's see here. Uh, I got to catch up to the comments here. Chris Car Charters, welcome back. Did I miss anything here? Let me go back to where I was so I don't miss anything. Hold on. Ooh, I can't go back any further. All right, so that's the furthest I can go back. Chase says, I'm optimistic of this new universe. I think we should keep in mind that Gunn didn't release every project. My only con is starting with Damien. What do you mean he didn't release every project? I don't understand that. But yeah. As I told, as we did in the poll, 80% of you are not like definitive. You don't have a definitive opinion. You're open to having your mind changed. And that's pretty good. Uh, I think that's the way this works. I think that because it's all over the place, I think there's something for everyone, but not everybody loves everything. And so that divides your audience. Josh says, this seems like the same stuff we were getting from Hamada. It doesn't seem like there's a good roadmap, or at least they don't make it clear. Yeah, I would agree. It's exact. I mean, it's exactly. You have exactly Hamada and Snyder. It's just now Saffron and Gunn. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. And it's going to have the same result. Some of this stuff will hit. Some of this stuff will miss. Uh, let's see here. Brother Quantum says, safe to say that no reboot means no reboot. Safe to say that no reboot means now means no reboot ever. Yeah, they're not going to totally reboot. I think that Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller will stick around. Uh, Paul Brunel says, could Gunn end the Reeves-verse if it outperforms? Well, Warner Brothers wouldn't let him because the Reeves-verse would be making so much money. JC says, not re rebooting feels like DC fe feels like uh, Phase 5 of Marvel because I can't see how this all connects. It doesn't connect, JC. I mean, it's loosely connected. Um, they're all in the same world, so they could connect, but it's not actually connected. And so that's what they've decided to do. There's no plan, which is the same problem that Marvel's been having. Uh, Denzel O'Neill says, choosing Damien just because it's his favorite is already alarming to me. Damien makes no sense if Batman hasn't raised all the other Robins and isn't older. I would agree. So they'll probably go, but they can't go with that much older a Batman because how is he going to fit with the new Superman and Wonder Woman? So I guess he's going to have to be a young dad. 
James Offer says, been a long time fan. Thank you, but I just wanted to applaud you on your willingness to explore new genres like you did in learning so much about video games. Oh, it was my pleasure. Uh, thank you. That was very kind, James. And then W says, do you see a billion dollar movie in here or ratings on the TV show like Game of Thrones? Um, I don't see a billion dollar movie here, to be honest with you. I don't see a flop necessarily. I think the Batman 2, the Elseworlds Batman could maybe make a billion dollars. But I see things in the 600 to 800 million range. I don't see necessarily any flops, so that's good. Except for Booster Gold and Swamp Thing and Authority. I think those side projects, I don't, I don't think they seem particularly strong to me. Uh, Blick says, Nightwing is becoming such a crucial thing in the comics, such a lost opportunity for the movies. Yeah, it boggles my mind that you wouldn't start with a really good child Dick Grayson story. Uh, Ice Rhino says, Vandango tweeted there will be a Taneshi Coat Superman project outside of the DCU. They're still doing that? That's nuts. So that, what is that? Potentially three Supermen because Robert Pattinson needs a Superman? Maybe he's Robert Pattinson's Superman. It's just, it's ridiculous. Mandy says, a good movie is a good movie, but I'm counting on you to provide the big picture expertise on this universe. Oh, thank you, Mandy. I, and I do agree that a good movie is a good movie. I don't think this plan will get to Marvel's level of success. That's it in a nutshell, Mandy. There will be hits here, but they will not have an ongoing cinematic universe where people feel they need to see everything. Uh, Cody says, could Blue Beetle and Booster Gold connect? For sure, for sure. Let's see who the cameos are. Are they going to turn Booster Gold into their Deadpool? Now that, oh my goodness, you just blew my mind. I bet you that's what they're thinking. Instead of making Harley Quinn their Deadpool, they're going to make Booster Gold their Deadpool. And I don't like that either. But that's exactly, I'm sure, what the pitch was. That's fascinating to me. Yes, thank you so many for so many people joining in the live. I think that's, oh, it's a real party in here, guys. Stephen Bells, do you think, says, do you think Nubia will appear on Wonder Woman, on the Wonder Woman show? I think she will. I hope that Philippus is really done well. I hope that that's for sure done. JSR, hey, JSR11, thanks for joining. James says, hi, Grace, I thank you so much for a comprehensive review of The Last of Us Season 3. Oh, I'm so glad that so many of you are bringing up my coverage of that. I, I, it was one of my favorite breakdowns I've ever done because I loved how sophisticated the episode was. Uh, we could not only talk about it from like a mythology fan perspective, but for The Last of Us, just on a side note, we were able to talk about the writing and the directing and how well structured it was as a screenplay, and that was really exciting. Uh, Bumbler says, do you think that makes that maybe the Gods and Monsters title might make more sense with the second unrevealed half of the... How is there more to this phase? How many projects is this? I mean, not, I'm not upset with you, Bumbler, but we got one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten projects. This is phase one. There's, there couldn't possibly be any more in this phase. That's ten projects. That's nuts to me. Uh, if Diana isn't in the Wonder Woman show, if that is true, Middle Kid 23, they shouldn't even bother making it. Christian says, my niece Emma says hi. Oh, hi, Emma. She wants to become a reporter journalist someday. Oh, it's my, oh I'm so happy to be there. That's what makes me feel so nice. Hi, Emma. Let's see here. Cameron Ross says, the Paradise Show takes place before Diana's birth. Uh, I think that's a really bad idea. I guess it's going to end with the, or making like a little Diana out of clay. Nobody wants to watch a Wonder Woman series without Wonder Woman on it. I would have immediately said no. But is anyone saying no to James Gunn? I don't think, I don't think Zazzy reads comics. Do you think on Wednesday, Zazzy's like, what came out today? I think Zazzy's like, I hired a comic book expert. And I'm like, did you? That's what I would say. Oh, I got to tell you, sometimes you can, being just a fan sometimes is even just a bad thing. You need to be an executive first. Thank you for all these comments. I want to make sure I don't miss any. That's right, Jay. Kevin Feige is the luckiest man in Hollywood. But he's not just luck. He made his own luck. Thank you, UCF810. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I believe I'm, so that's as far back as I can go. Nacho Flores says, I hate that he's doing his quirky characters first and then the core character is afraid of a Chris Pratt, Will Poulter level casting on all of these. That would be nervous. I would be nervous about that for sure. And then, let's see here. Sam Shugart says, this is a big loss to me. Starting with Damien, are you kidding me? Keeping Amanda Waller? I've seen every DC movie, even the ones I had no interest in, but I'm not paying for Creature Commandos. Yeah, that's a tough sell, for sure. Let me see here. 
And then the prodigal Fraudson says, I disagree, all these movies are backed by strong, strong comic storylines. Oh, it's good to get, to get a dissenting opinion. Also, Damian Wayne means Dick Grayson is already existing and Todd is killed by Joker. They all exist in that story. But could you do that in a single movie? I mean, isn't that a series then? And then how is that different than what I've been watching with Titans all this time? That's my concern. Okay, let's see here. Let's see what else, if I missed anything else. Uh, McElnard says it's not really elsewords if they don't deviate too much from the source. Well, that's true, that's true. Uh, Margo says, uh, Margo, again, I love your name. Um, I, I can't believe Gunn didn't do a complete reboot. Yeah, I'm disappointed too. Uh, Sarah Bacon says, Sarah, look at your nice smile. Batman could have waited and did Green Arrow. Um, that's true. I would not have done Batman. I, don't, I just don't, I think we got a great Batman. We don't need this again. Uh, Josh, it seems like they're trying to introduce character stories that they don't have credit or goodwill with the pub, general public to become successful. Well, you know, you could argue, argue that Marvel does that, but Marvel had to, you know, Marvel's been at this for a very long time. What Marvel can accomplish now is because they put the time in. Uh, Raphael says, I don't want Gunn's daddy issues showing up in the new DC. That's interesting that you say that because I feel that Gunn has mommy issues based on a lot of his stories. That's interesting. Uh, but of course, Guardians 2 was very daddy issued based, but I see a lot of, a lot of uh, mommy issues in his other material. Greg Lazaro says, was Gal Gadot cut from Shazam 2? She might have been. She might have been. I can't confirm that, but I know she was cut from The Flash. Uh, CT says, I think Gal Gadot would be a great big Bartha or Giganta, the way she at least has a different hairstyle. I don't think they're going to bring her back. Let's see, but I don't think so. Adrian Merrick says, for some reason, everything coming out of Gunn's mouth sounded hypothetical instead of concrete. <laughs> that's funny. I think that's his lack of skills as a presenter. Uh, me no likey. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Uh, then um, Shawshank, uh, I, I just think he, I think that that's true as a presenter. He didn't have uh, conviction, but he might've just been nervous. I mean, I'm sure he is nervous. I mean, this is like a big deal and you guys are gonna rake him across the coals if he doesn't deliver. <laughs> As you know, fandom does. I mean, hey, you wanna run with the, you wanna run a franchise? You're gonna have to deal with the fallout on that. Um, but so I, I think that's more about him being nervous and also because it's not a great plan. Uh, and it isn't a plan. It isn't a plan. It really is like fan casting. You know, if you asked a fan what they wanted to do, you were like, hey, what do you think we should do? And they'd be like, you know, it'd be cool. And that's how I feel this kind of turned out. Instead of like someone being like, how am I gonna build a structure that has lasting ability and is gonna sell tickets? Uh, let's see here. Shawshank Dwabendi says they should have uh, put a, bl a, bl um, a, 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 some kind of explainer at the end of the flash this stays, oh, this stays, this doesn't stay. That's funny. They can hand that out when you leave the theater. Uh, UCF, it is very confusing. Bradley Hutchinson says, hi, Grace, who would you cast as Superman versus who do you think James Gunn will cast? Uh, Gunn gives off unpredictable vibes and is scary. I'm nervous about who he's going to cast. I want a good old boy, as I said the other day. I think that that's very important, and I don't want someone who is a hip, cool Superman. I have no interest in that. Welm says the Wonder Woman series pitch sounds like elementary school playground tech. It would be like Game of Thrones <laughs> without Wonder Woman. I'm like, well, I don't care about that. No care. Every, you know, I got to tell you, they've been trying to make the Superman, like the Batman family is incredible. Now they're trying to make the Superman family work. I just read the new comic with all the Superman characters in it. And I was like, this sucks. And I got to tell you, I don't think the Wonder Woman family works either, to be honest with you. I'm not saying it couldn't work but I don't think, you know, anybody works without the main character there. I would watch Batman stories without Batman in it because that's how good the Bat family is. But they've never done the work to get to, to build out the Superman family or the Wonder Woman family. Stan Lowe says, could the Giffen era league fit into the Gunverse? Um, but yeah, but I don't think the mainstream, are you talking about Kyle, Kyle Griffin? I think that's, that's a deep dive. Danny says, do you think Henry Gall and Ben are planning to sue Warner Brothers? Heck no. Certainly not Ben Affleck. He wants to continue to work with the studio. I think that Henry Cavill is just probably like, where did I go wrong? And I think Gal Gadot's probably just still has her head spinning about this because it's really shocking. TJ Williams says, how could they possibly keep Ezra Miller? You know, somebody had a good theory about this and I'm glad you brought it up. I was talking to an industry friend of mine and they said, you know, do you think because of James Gunn's problem where he almost got canceled, do you think that he feels a kinship with Ezra Miller? 
Do you think he understands where Ezra Miller was coming from, that everybody deserves a second chance? And that, I felt, and that's what the Flash movie is about. And so I was like, I could see that. And also because Ezra Miller showed up. When James Gunn needed Justice Leaguers for a big flashy ending for his Peacemaker show, Ezra Miller showed up. And I'm sure that James Gunn is like, I'm gonna, I gotta pay that back. DP Sleek says they're just going to botch the authority. I'm ner- I don't even know if anybody would want to see the authority, to be honest with you. Ethan says, how will they explain this in universe? Uh, that's because Ezra Miller can run from any universe to any universe he wants to because he has the Flash ability. So Ezra Miller happens to be the one character that can exist in any reality he wants to. Maybe he'll pull over Jason Momoa's Aquaman. That's how they can fix that, you know? C.F. Williams says, uh, why, Grace, why wouldn't you do an epic Jon Stewart Green Lantern solo movie? I agree. I agree. But I think they don't want to, again, offend. They're trying to have their cake and eat it, too. They don't want to upset the Hal Jordan fans. They don't want to upset the Jon Stewart fans. So they're just going to make them live to coexist in, in, in disharmony. I can guarantee you those two fandoms don't get along. Uh, the product, oh, so I already answered that. Um... Technoir Video says maybe Matt Reeves will do Dick Grayson. They can't both do Robin. That would be horrible. Oh, I hope they don't do that. Uh, Maria. Hi, Maria. Says, hey, Grace. Thanks for keeping us informed. I hope you... Oh, my pleasure, Maria. I hope you have a great week, too. Nacho Flores says, hate that he is doing his... Oh, I already answered that. Marina says, the craziest thing is that if I could watch only one of these movies announced today, I would still choose the Batman, too. That's fascinating. You know what, Maria? Marina, so would I. Another poll. I fear another. I feel another poll coming on here. Hold on. What right now? What are you more interested in? I hundred percent agree. So the Gunverse. I mean, I'll watch the Gunverse for sure. For sure, I'll cover the heck out of it. But my heart is like Reevesverse, baby. But they know we've seen the Reevesverse. To be fair. The Wonder Woman show is like Sony's Spider-Man-less movies. That's hilarious, c I totally agree with that. Melissa, you got gifted a membership. That's wonderful. Let's see. Uh, our man says, Grace, Gal sucked in Wonder Woman 1984 due to script and directing. Uh, I think that the right director, although it was the same director, I think that Gal Gadot can do quite a good job. But I think that she just messed up too badly. I'm ready for somebody else. Paul says, uh, with the DC, uh, 2023 DCEU movie, get the brand DC. I heard they will be using Elseworlds as the brand, um, which would be, I don't know. I think Reeves is like, don't stick that on my movie. Uh, Sadie Sink is too young for Poison Ivy. I don't think that you can do the storylines that you need to. I have to tell you, I bought the Valentine's Day comic yesterday uh, from DC, and the only good story was the Harley Ivy story. Although I got to tell you, Harley Quinn, both in the comic and in the Valentine's Day special that's coming out, Harley Quinn, she has, like, problems in relationships. She's doing all the stuff she did with Joker again, and I'm like, why are you making Harley have, like, relationship issues? I mean, they need couples counseling already, in my opinion. Let's see here. Ashton says, I don't get why they didn't just do a big reboot. They should have totally done a big reboot. This is ridiculous. Alan Richson, oh, he'd be a pretty good Superman, but he has different coloring, Fahad, but he's like a good choice. I would like him, actually. Let's see here. Leo Skywriter says, what about Constantine too, Grace? Uh, you got me. I guess it's another Elseworlds story. The Poetic Painter says, if audiences were barely invested in the MCU shows, why would they invest in DCs? The TV shows are too much homework. The Reeves Batman universe has more of my interest. And it seems very well built. It's, you know, to me, the Reeves verse seems very well connected. Michael Brandy says, no one asked for Wildstorm's authority. I- I'm sure nobody did. Lee Riddle says, let George R.R. R. Martin write the mythos of the Paradise Island show if they want it to be Game of Thrones level. He- he's too busy. He can't even write his own stuff. Let's see here. Mm, I'll do a couple more questions and then, I'll, and then I'll wrap the stream. But I'm so glad that so many of you joined me today. And I had a really good time. To, you know what? I have to say, at least there's energy back here. Well, at least we feel like there's energy and there is movement forward, even if it's not particularly good. Anthony says, keeping Ezra and ditching others blows my mind. It's very bizarre. That movie must be amazing. It must be absolutely amazing. And I'm very excited to see the trailer. It must be the greatest movie ever made. 
Adrian says, Grace, I respected how you kept your cool on yesterday's live stream. Ah, oh, thank you. Yes, a lot of people are like, watch Tar. And I'm like, never. Let's see here. Uh, Glubby Snot. I'd rather watch all this. Uh, Glubby Snot says, need clarification. It's going to officially kept certain actors while removing others in future projects. That is true, Glubby. Just to reiterate, he is keeping Viola Davis. It looks like, because of that, he's keeping the entire Gunverse, which means everyone in the Suicide Squad and everybody on Peacemaker. He also has left the door open to keep Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller, who, what do you know, both were in Peacemaker in the season finale. Uh, Bumbler says, my question has, was because James specifically said this wasn't the whole slate they were working on. I think he meant, James Gunn's planning eight to ten years. You know, aim high, baby, aim high. I'd be shocked if he got to make more than this. I'd be shocked if he wanted to, quite frankly. Guy from King's Highway says, I expected a more prestigious lineup. Who the heck is Bo Booster Gold? You're going to find out. I think they didn't do the New Gods, Carice Ewing, because I think that the New Gods were too Snydery. I think that Snyder had too much there. Ah, uh, Tammy. Tammy says, hey, Grace, I am politely disagreeing with you about being too soon for Supergirl. Supergirl is much more interesting and complex character than Superman. I personally like these ideas and want to give them a chance. I like your positivity, Tammy, and I hope you're right. And again, I liked that comic so much that it's based on that I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. Uh, let's see here. And then HC Tube says, will they be able to switch all this up based off a of fan response, like the Sonic redo, Gun being so involved with the socials? I think it would be humiliating if they switch this up. They can't. This is it. I mean, he could, but then I, I think he'd just look like an idiot. Uh, tell me how you really think. What do you really think? Let's see. Okay. Let me finish the poll here. Finn Moreau says, the fact that James Gunn didn't do what he said he was going to do with this new slate just goes to show how right Grace was about saying and pay attention to what they do, not what they say. Thank you, Finn. That's true. James Gunn has gone on the record in the past saying that there should only be one version of each character, but he's already broken that. So, you know, he's just spitballing. He's just spitballing, man. That's the downside of having such good access to somebody. They, they spitball. You know, they don't have, like, takes that are, like, looked over and, like, they're like, yes, this is what I want to say. Denzel says, James is like, ah, oh, Paradise Island, the authority. And we're like, we just wanted Zatanna and Vixen. I would have liked that. I would have based this more on the animation. Um, so let's see. And then uh, H. Tis says, Gunn should have followed the Bruce, Tim, and Paul Dini roadmap for Batman, Superman, and Justice League. I think that would have gone over quite well. All right, so let me finish this poll. Thanks, Joey. That's very kind of you. And Raphael says, do you think Chris Pratt will be his booster gold? I think for sure. And I think it's going to be his Deadpool now that I thought of that. And I don't know about how I feel about that. 70% of you are more interested in the Reevesverse. Wow. That's substantial. That's great for Matt Reeves. That's great. Really good. Maybe Matt Reeves is smart like a fox because his Reevesverse will survive no matter what happens. He's like, do whatever you want out there, man. It doesn't involve me. But I'm very excited for the Penguin Show. I'm very excited for the Batman 2, and I hope that he gets to make his Arkham Asylum show, which I also think sounds exceptional. Um, but that's incredible. That's a very big discrepancy. Uh, but let's see how the casting goes. I think that the casting is really going to be important. And, you know, as uh, OCL points out, Matt Reeves has earned your trust, and James Gunn hasn't yet. And I think he could have earned your trust today if he'd done a 100% reboot. But so far, he's just proven to be exactly what we think, that he thought that he was going to do. And so I think that makes us feel we kind of know how these movies are going to go. But again, he could prove us wrong. But let's see. So we'll see what happens. Thank you so much for joining me for this stream. I had a delightful time talking to you. Uh, I will probably be breaking these things down once we start getting information about who is going to be in the projects, uh, behind and in front of the camera. And I do believe you should be getting some of those announcements quite soon because they got to start making this stuff. Uh, especially because he said this is just for the next few years. So that means they have to start writing them almost immediately. But I had a lovely time. Thank you so much. And, uh, and if you, uh, again, if you just missed part of this, this will be up shortly as a rewatch. And I'm going to go and put in, the, put in the chapter times as soon as it processes. Okay, everybody, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>